This week on the Baseline Podcast, Josh and I break down the last weekend of football games. We talk about the NFL and we talk about college football. We first break down, well, the Browns' amazing victory versus the Bengals. How are Bengals fans feeling? How are Jets fans feeling with the Aaron Rodgers injury? Then we focus on two college football. We break down the games from this past week, as well as previewing games coming up this week. All that and so much more coming up on the Baseline Podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Baseline Podcast. I'm Ben. That's Josh. And what a weekend it was of football. Uh, We're going to get all into it this this episode. Uh, But first, Josh, how are you doing? How was your weekend? How have you, are you, are you having a good week? Having a good week to the, this week? So far, so good. Uh, you know, us Cleveland fans don't really get to celebrate a whole lot of victory Mondays, victory That's Tuesdays, true. victory Wednesdays after week one of the season. So this is back to back years. Is something by the way. new. This is something new. Uh, we're not used to, but beating, beating Joe Burrow in the city of Cleveland's just Makes also something the Browns do. And it just happened to be week one this year. So. That's true. Um, I tell you, I'm telling you, the Browns played well. We'll get into it here in a second. You know, I spent. You know, I had a good weekend. I will say that I spent in the sun a lot. I was doing a, a youth national camp for American football here in Hungary, and then on top of that, uh, I sat in the embassy today as we're recording this, like for like three or four hours. So that was fun. Hmm. So you know, just the life of a international overseas but anyways uh we are going to now focus on the browns so we will talk college football but as you know we are like a college football kind of kind of dudes we like college football a little bit more so that gives us more time to talk college football so we're going to first start off with breaking down the cleveland browns we're going to talk about what we thought of the game what we thought about certain players and then as well as we're going to talk about who they got coming up which is a team that i think got surprisingly whooped as i would say maybe maybe not i don't know well we can talk about that but um yeah so uh we could talk about the browns and we will but i do want to get your take because i know we'll switch to college football pretty quick before we get really into the browns what's your take on the whole aaron Rodgers? like how what was your mindset because i have a few jets fans that were just like you thought that they had ripped away their whole bank account like they they were they were so sad <laughs> what what is your thoughts on that yeah i, I didn't watch the game but i saw the play on on Twitter and it's just like, you gotta be kidding me. Like this is the end, I guess, of two, three years of Aaron Rodgers trade rumor drama. And yeah, I, I do doubt this is how he's going to go out. I think no, try yeah, to, he for sure will come back. I think, I think he'll try to come back, but it's just going to be hard. Achilles are tough to come back from. You can look especially at especially that age too. You can look at Kevin Durant and then, yeah, just the whole age thing. It's, it's going to be tough, but also since Aaron's not going to play 70% of the snaps, that means that uh, Green Bay is not going to get a first round pick in return for him either. Oh, so it's like it's, a double hit whammer. It's like Aaron Rodgers with the, it's a double with the middle finger. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure the Jets are more disappointed that they're yeah, not going to get like even, you know, a, more than a game out of him. But yeah, so it, it hurts both sides. Well, I'm just saying this is Zach Wilson's la- probably last opportunity you would say, right? This is his last chance to prove that he can be the guy, I would think, right? Do you yeah. think this is like a last real chance? We're going to see if the Jets try to go and sign someone too. Tom I mean, Brady, still... man. I'm hearing rumors. No, nah, Tom, Br- Tom um, Brady. If they, if they go and get somebody, it's probably going to be like a Carson Wentz or a Nick Foles or something like that. Supposedly Kaepernick has reached out. Yeah, reached out. Uh, I, I threw my uh, name in the running too, so we'll see what happens. But... I think it was uh, – uh, I think David Cohn, our buddy David Cohn, posted something like they someone posted, you know, go sign someone with his last name rhymes with Happernick. And he said, I think he said something like, my name doesn't rhyme with Happernick, but I'd be more than willing or something like that. I was like, that's yeah, gold. <laughs> gold. Yeah, I screenshot that and threw that up on the, the Instagram story. That was too that's, good. That's gold. Um, but yeah, it, it's it is sad, man. Like, I think both of us, me and you both, I think we grew up watching Aaron Rodgers, you know, right after that Brett Favre era. Obviously, we kind of were in our middle school, high school years when that happened. And and you have Aaron Rodgers and what he's meant to the game of football. And so, but I agree with you. I think Aaron Rodgers is too much of a competitor just to be like, okay, I'm retiring based off an injury. He wants to go out on his time, not based on an injury or anything like that. I just think it's gonna be very hard for the Jets to go, do we pay him money? not knowing how full he's going to be like, that's, that's the thing that I think will be interesting. Um, my thought is maybe he goes out to San Francisco or something, you know, and 
lives out his dreams in Cali. You know, that's where he's from. So, um, yeah, it, it's a definitely interesting thing. Uh, we, we can obviously talk about that more. But, Josh, let's get into it. You know, as Browns fans, Josh, we hear a bunch of crap, especially from Bengals fans. We're used to it. Josh, you grew up around it. I grew up around it. It's just kind of like you you, you know it's coming. But I, I didn't, I, you know, I thought they were going to win on, you know, on on Sunday, but I did not think they were going to manhandle the Bengals. And, like, I mean legit, like, manhandle the Bengals. Um, that's my thoughts. That's my initial thought. Yeah, when I uh, when I saw that uh, they were dealing with the rain and stuff, which was kind of wild because where I live, like an hour to an hour and a half west, there wasn't any rain. We actually had sun. So <laughs> welcome to Ohio. Yeah, different different area, but still, yeah. Uh, so just keeping the rain in mind, like you could expect quarterback play on both sides isn't going to be the best. You're probably going to see some slips, and as long as we ended up leaving the game with some kind of win. I was going to be okay with it because it's Cincy and they're a good team and we both picked them to win a division. What I didn't expect though, was for us to hold Joe, oh Joe Burrow under a hundred yards for us to be hitting him and sacking him as many times as we did. And even when he would get the ball out, we, we held T Higgins to zero catches on eight yep. targets. Our corners just blanketed. Denzel, Denzel Ward is unreal. That man Our is corner- something else. Our corners blanketed Jamar Chase, blanketed T. Higgins. There was a lot of 50 50 balls that T could have gotten that we just were able to break up. And then you saw them trying to do all kinds of like weird stuff with Jamar just to put the ball in his hand so he could finally do something on like these uh, quick passes, these end arounds, these quick pitches, whatever it was. They just wanted him to be able to get the ball because at least in the passing game, it just wasn't able to do it. But defense looked incredible. The defensive line definitely is very vamped. The secondary is healthy and at full strength right now, and you can see just what they're capable of against one of the top uh, wide receiver groups in the league. So the way that they won shocked me the most. And I know Deshaun was, you know, probably average at best, but you could blame that on the rain. I'll, I'm willing to give him another shot once it gets a little bit drier. But Nick Chubb balled out, and even with uh, Jack Conklin uh, having to leave the game to Dewan injury, Jones, big do- Big Dewan Jones comes in. <laughs> don't even really, don't even really notice a dip in production. So I, I, I feel really good about uh, the way that they won Week One. Yeah, you know, a couple of things came to my mind. One, I love how Bengals fans were just like, "Oh, well, you know, he he wasn't one hundred percent mentally. He wasn't there." I'm like, dude, if the Browns fans would be making excuses, the Bengals fans would be all up in our case. So I'm just going to point out, just give credit where credit's due, right? We've always given credit to Bengals whenever they've played, you know, they've balled out or whatever. Um, I'll be honest. Did I expect the defense to be this good or at least like this improved? No, but I think it shows when you have someone who's as good of a pass rusher or near as good as a pass rusher as Garrett on the other side, it makes Garrett look, I think, so much quicker and so much faster because he he doesn't have to worry about a double team necessarily as much. Um, my other thing was, I thought it was funny, you know, Jamar Chase had been, you know, saying about the elves or whatever, and then, you know, the Browns go out there and beat him. It's just, those little things just make it, I think they fired up the guys a little bit more. Um, Grant Delpit looked phenomenal. Like, I think he finally is getting back to that Thorpe award winning year, but with the LSU, if you remember back, I think it was like 2019 or 2018 when he was a stud and in college, like we're starting to, I think, see that again. Um, Denzel Ward, if he stays healthy, I've said it from day one. He is one of the, he's a top 10 corner in the league. Um, and Emerson has turned out to be a great late round pick. And I think what one thing we've learned about Barry is that he he picks good pretty late. I mean, look at Dewan Jones. Dewan Jones went in there. First off, I don't think he should have been a fourth round pick. I think he should have been more like a, a second round pick. Um, but the dude's a freak. He's six foot eight, he, you know, he's 350 pounds. Um it sucks to see Jack Conklin go down because he is that, you know, that all pro you're looking for. But I think this is a great opportunity for jo- uh, Dewan Jones to to say like, hey, this is my time. And and if if the Browns have found a, a diamond in the rough, then that's that's phenomenal. Um, uh, they looked great. Chubb, I feel like I don't know about you, Josh, but I always feel like Chubb is the guy that like he runs for 100 yards, but doesn't get any rushing touchdowns. And it just drives me insane. Like, it's just like I think more games than not. That's what happens with him. Yeah, even excuse me even on third down some of the situations that they're bringing jerome ford in it's just like i trust nick chubb in this situation oh, a lot a more I, yeah i don't get it but yeah, yeah i mean you know going back to deshaun watson because i wanted to talk, touch on that deshaun watson like he 
yeah, he didn't look amazing, but I think he did what they had to to win. You know, he had a big two point conversion. He had that run for a touchdown from like 13. I think we're seeing glimpses. I think when there's not rain, I think we're seeing glimpses of what this offense can be with a little bit more accuracy. I think we need, uh, you know, he's at work on that game a little bit more of, of reading the defense, I think a little bit better. But man, if if this defense can be the way they are for the whole year and they're staying healthy and this offense can just be as good as they were or maybe a tad better, Josh, maybe we're looking at something that us Browns fans can be proud of and it's not a shock to us. And like, we can say like, yeah, we knew we can see this coming. Um, that'd be phenomenal. Yeah, it's uh, things seem to be changing. I think right now they're a favorite for the Monday night game in Pittsburgh, which which is a rarity. Historically, you don't usually see that. No. Uh, one other thing on the on the the Bengals game that I'm curious your thoughts on that yeah. decision to go for it on fourth down that Cincinnati yeah. took for, with like three or four minutes left from their own thirty. It, the weirdest part about that was was that I thought you had enough time to maybe go get a stop there there actually was i think that was actually five or six minutes yeah and so my right. thought was like if you go and down the score, and get a stop, I, and the score was uh it was it like was, 17 yeah to, it was 17 to three it was like 17 to three or something like that or something like that or yeah. 20 to three something like that. we scored the final touchdown after that draft yeah so so my thought was just like i, I was confused because i'm sitting there going one you're risking getting sacked and I, I said that like right before that play i was like you're risking getting sacked because you know what the Browns are doing. They're going to put four dudes in there that are going to get after the quarterback. Um, and I know we'll talk about Ohio State, but this is one thing that frustrates me about Ohio State. Like, you should be able to just put four dudes there and they just run after the quarterback. Um, yeah, it, it was frustrating to me. All the Bengals just made a lot of stupid decisions. I, I didn't get a lot of their play calling. I'll be honest with you. I, I didn't, I don't understand how you have a, I don't, again, maybe Burrow was off mentally, but man, like, I just look at what the Browns even said. I mean, you held him to under a hundred yards. Like this dude is a dude that was in the Super Bowl two years ago, and you held him to under a hundred yards. Like it, it's uh, this defense is what made me so happy, Josh. Because what was the one thing me and you were worried all off season was how's this linebacker is going to look? How are the D tackles going to look? They got rid of the dead wood, um, and the only concern I have is that linebacking core. I don't know if it's deep enough, and that's just my opinion. I don't know if it's deep enough. We're going to get a lot of help from that, from those defensive tackles, though. I thought Tomlinson and Harris made a, a lot more plays yes, that agree, we just yeah. aren't used to seeing from interior defensive line. Well, and I think part of it is that they had small defensive defense tackles before. I think now they have some big, beefy dudes that are going to plug holes, and I think that's what you need. So Yeah, it's going to make life easier for the linebackers. Oh, for sure. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, any other games before we head into the Browns preview for next week? What are your thoughts? Was there anything of any team that shocked you uh, week one that you just didn't see coming that is a is a nice surprise? Maybe not necessarily a sh – I know you kind of touched on maybe shocking, but I wasn't surprised to see the, the 49ers beat the Steelers as bad as they were. That's one of the NFC favorites to me against yeah. one of the one of the worst teams in the in the AFC North. So I was – I was loving seeing that. Uh, Brock Purdy was looking. You were know, you shocked though? But ever. were you shocked though that they did? They were able to do offensively with it. Maybe not defensively, but offensively, how they were able to run through that defense. Because the Steelers' defense is still a top tier defense, I believe. I think when healthy, it is. But I mean, that's still Christian McCaffrey running the football yeah. for them. Uh, Iuke made a couple George, nice catches. George Kittle. Yeah, they're loaded, uh, man. <laughs> the the other one that that really uh surprised me was cowboys cowboys giants yeah uh that was i can't remember the final score of that one but Daniel is this Jones... the cowboys is this the cowboys for you josh or is this like a a one-time thing because i never know what the cowboys i i want to say this is the cowboys because if this could be the cowboys it would be so much fun to watch if this is the cowboys this year well, i'll tell you what i if you thought Cincinnati Bengals offensive line was bad, Giants offensive line dude, might be bad, even dude. worse. They're atrocious. I, they're not going to win many games. If no. It's not like the Dallas defensive line is bad, but I don't think it's that good that they should be getting yeah. eight, nine sacks on Daniel Jones. But and they paid Daniel Jones how much money again? Uh, it's four years, $160 million, I believe. Oh. Yeah, they the Bengals actually took Joe Burrow out. Uh, with a few minutes which was left smart, in the game, but which is smart. But they let they let Daniel Jones play the whole game all That's the way awful, to end, man. and still put him out to get blasted. And 
you know, hurried and it's just like, geez, man, I, I guess I mean, that was, guess that was one thing, that, that that's one thing we said, like all off season, man, we said this on the podcast, like the giants, if they don't get the offensive line fixed, that was our worry. Like, what are they going to do? Can't hand the ball off. You can't block. Yeah. You me as a, you know, me as a Saquon Barkley fantasy owner too, is a little concerned <laughs> too about that pick. No. Trading him, finding a trade right now. <laughs> Yeah. And, and this is, I mean, this was the first game of the season, but just how bad uh, Kansas city's help around oh my Patrick goodness, Mahomes dude. was. They have nothing outside of Kelsey. They have it's, nothing. I, I didn't man. think it like the, the big winner from that game, honestly, I think was Chris Jones. He ended up yeah, signing for a, sure. a one year deal after that, but she was man. Kadarius Tony with the four drops and oh the, my word, dude. the drop pass and it being a pick <laughs> six. And it's just like Mahomes is one of those quarterbacks that, doesn't really need a whole lot of superstars around yeah. him to be successful, but in that Do game, you, it looked like he needed Are you him. shocked that no big-name receiver wanted to go to KC? Like, there's no one that's like, I want to play with Mahomes. Like, are you a little shocked by that? Maybe a little bit. Uh, like, Hopkins, I think, would have fit amazing in that offense. He would have He would have definitely filled a role that they don't really have. Like, the thing about Kansas City was Sky Moore, Tony, and I think Marvez, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. So all they, they all they're all smaller, faster receivers. That, They're trying to replace Tyreek Hill with non-Tyreek Hill players, like in like in Moneyball when they play replace yeah, Gianni with three different guys, you know? <laughs> three dudes. That and, all I mean, out. I mean, last year, last year it seemed to work out just fine for him. Yeah, but I don't know, man. Ooh, I don't know if they can do this all season, especially if Kelsey's not one hundred percent. Which I warned people that were by getting him in the first round of the fantasy. I was like, he's thirty four, guys. Like he's not young, like he's like thirty three or something like that. He's he's, he's old. still his top five. He was still top five in like receiving yards and touchdowns last year, just as a tight end though. I know, still yeah, a great player, but yeah, they they definitely need him just to, to come back asap yeah. because they looked hopeless offensively without it. And then on the Detroit side, a team that I thought that was could awesome, win that man. division that was awesome. Good to, good to see them get that win, and you hear Dan Campbell Aaron saying they, they could win. We're so but... happy for you, Aaron. Even even amidst all the mistakes on Kansas City's end, I would have thought Detroit would have been good enough to win by more than a point. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I don't know if you saw, but there's a former former NFL quarterback. He does, like, streaming now and TikToks now. He predicted the game that it was going to be a nail-biter, 21-20 Detroit by, like, a late game stuff, which I thought was, like, mm -hmm. kind of interesting. But my surprise, Josh, is actually the Arizona Cardinal defense. They had, like, six sacks. And I was like... This team, I recognize very, very few dudes on this team. I was going through the roster. I'm like, I don't know many of these guys. Um, but that was, it was cool to see that they're at least trying and, and hustling. Um, kind of some um, underwhelming, I think, for me this week was uh, CJ Stroud, Bryce Young did not look the greatest, I'll be honest. Um, they there really that, didn't. There weren't that many quarterbacks that looked good in general. Richardson looked the best out of the rookies, I'll be honest. Yeah, and I I can't believe I'm saying like that. Like Lamar but. Lamar Jackson wasn't all that fantastic. No, he wasn't. I talked about Baker Burrow. Mayfield looked good. Baker Mayfield looked pretty good. So good one. Josh Josh Allen was kind of disappointing in that. Oh first yeah, that's true. Yeah, and then Rodgers with the injury, not really a you know a performance issue, but it's yeah. just like not really a lot of two attack of Iowa won the won the week as far as quarterback oh, performance dude, goes. Yeah. And, yeah, that offense that offense Winning with Tyree man. Kill. Yeah, that offense is scary. Uh, whoever had Tyreek Hill just had a beautiful fantasy weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I know a guy that has Tugavailoa and Hill on his fantasy team. Like he might as well just started those two guys, and he would have been set. Um, anyways, let's let's preview next week's Browns game. Uh, we won't touch in a lot of the NFL games. Um, we can in the, as they let us know if you want us to do more college or NFL. Let us know. But Josh, as we're looking into this next week for the Browns, obviously they have a little bit more time off because they play on Monday night. Um, they're rocking. I, I believe they're supposed to be rocking the white uniforms. I'm not for sure if that that's confirmed yet or not. Um, but it's going to be a fun night. It's in Pittsburgh. We all know that Pittsburgh can be a place of horrors for Browns fans. Um, what is your thought going to this game? And maybe give me the keys to victory for you um, that that they need to focus on in this game. Uh, so it's kind of a different, totally different matchup than what Cincinnati is going to yeah. give us. We're not going to have the – Pittsburgh doesn't have the weapons offensively as Cincinnati no. does, so I'm I'm feeling really good about what the defense can do. Uh, and then even just uh, offensively, I think that uh, – things that I'm going to be looking for since Pittsburgh just played one of the offenses in the league that has some of the most weapons yeah. when you factor in Debo, Kittle, 
Ayuk, McCaffrey, I don't think our skill guys stack quite that high, but we still got some good guys in there. And with the weather being hopefully better, looking for Deshaun to improve, uh, expect the offensive line to continue to open holes for Chubb to be able to get 100 yards. Some of the Juwan plays Jones. that we drew up. Juwan Jones would be a good test for him. Some of the plays we drew up, I think, for uh, like Elijah Moore and Amari Cooper will work better if they don't have to, you know, change direction so fast and switch yeah. sides of the field. It's Those were tough plays to do for them, but that's kind of what I'm mostly going to be looking for is just, okay, now that, you know, the weather, assuming it's not going to rain Monday night, isn't a factor anymore, are some of those issues that we saw going to get cleaned up? Will we see Deshaun be more accurate? Will we see uh, Elijah Moore with better footing be able to uh, take full advantage of all his strengths? Will we see Amari Cooper be able to uh, maybe get some more catches on his targets? And obviously some of that was also just due to a lot of footballs thrown in the dirt by Deshaun too. But that's what I'm looking for. Keys to victory, just you know, take advantage of the, of the weather and yeah. uh, continue to stay strong on the defensive side. Yeah, you know, I, I think for me, I, I'm really I'm really excited to see um this matchup because I feel like this might be the tides turning where we see the Steelers. I think if the Browns win this, you see the Steelers kind of going towards the seller of the AFC North, not in like a bad way, but just they're not gonna be a top tier team. Um and this could be the Browns ascension. This could be where the Browns put their foothold and say, Hey, we're here to stay. Um so for me, um I'm really trying to think about, you know, what, what, what to look for. I think one of the big things for me, one of my keys to victory is the, the defense. Like I said, like you said, I think the defense has to be a, um, a solid, it has to keep, keep going the way it's going. You know, you can't take a step back. I know Josh, we talk about all the time consistency. Um, will the, you know, they don't have maybe stud receivers. So, what are you going to do against the run? You know, they have Najee Harris. What are you going to do against this run? Um, and then on the offensive side of the ball, my two my two keys to victory are one, Dewan Jones. Um, let's see what he does. Let's see how can he how can he handle a full game. Most likely, you know this, they're going to probably put TJ Watt, they'll put some dudes on that side to test him. Um, how does he stand up for that? And then finally, get Nick Chubb the ball. Um, we know that when Nick Chubb runs for 100 yards, the Browns are very, very successful. So let's get him as 100 yards every single time and see what happens. I'm sitting here trying to figure out if Cleveland loses, how did that game go? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out too, yeah. And I'm I'm the w- way that I'm leaning kind of right now is Pittsburgh uh, does a really good job controlling possession, Yeah, which means that Najee Harris is getting a lot of rushing yards. Uh, even in the 30-7 thir- to seven loss, whatever it was, TJ Watt still had three or four sacks or something like that, a lot of yeah. – uh, hurry so you know maybe uh maybe in addition to Conklin going down we lose Jedrick Wills in this game and we're starting you know two backup tackles and Pittsburgh's able to get pressure just enough pressure on Deshaun to shake things up uh, I think we're kind of looking around at a lot of things needing to go Pittsburgh's way but that's kind of what I'm thinking right now is Pittsburgh controlled tempo they won the battle at the line of scrimmage getting Najee the ball and maybe we had another injury on the offensive line I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I, win? the only other thing I can think of, I mean, I think turnovers too. Like that's the turnover thing. I didn't mention that in my keys to victory, but I think that's that's very obvious as a football coach myself. That's like the one thing as an offense coordinator, you talk about your team, you win the turnover battle, you most likely win the game. And I think that's one way that, you know, we saw uh, Minka Fitzpatrick last year impact the game. I think when you turn the ball over and it turns into points or short field, that's the one way I think that the Steelers can win this game. I think, again, I agree with you with, with running the ball. And if they can somewhat, I'm not saying completely, but somewhat slow down Nick Chubb. I think if you, if you, we've seen teams in the past, when you slow him down and you force the Browns to throw the ball or bring another back in, they're really tough. Uh, it's really tough for the Browns to win. Um, and so that, that would be my way. I, I see them winning is they do it the old, as you would say, Josh, the old nitty gritty way, right? Like, the old style of yeah. you know plugging in the holes and then running it down your throat. The other the other thing too that I just thought of and maybe we well maybe we can't really take this for granted. Dustin Hopkins was three for three, Dude, I think. He on was field goals. phenomenal. This is the first time we I don't, felt good. <laughs> when's the last time we felt good Dude, about a Browns? Phil kicker? Dawson. 
Phil Dawson was the last guy I yeah. felt actual confident in every time I'm he not, left the kick. I'm not going to go ahead and say Hopkins is the guy, but it's like, what if he just has a one-off game where he goes well, like one of two or well, my uh, like that in all this my thought and... of that is that uh, we also said that about um about uh Cade York last year in the first game when he hit that game winner, we were like, oh, we found our kicker, we spent a fourth rounder, and then now he's not even on the team. So. To me, with a kicker, it's tough to see, but like, I, there's many moments where I go, "Can we have Phil Dawson back, please?" Um, yeah. And I, I guess he kicked a six, almost a sixty yarder at like age like forty something. So hey, Phil Dawson, just saying, if you want to come back, no. Um, yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's we're thinking of a lot of things that got to go Pittsburgh's way, but at the same yeah. time, it it is the NFL and unexpected stuff it's happens true. all the time. What would and... you? Oh, what would you say then? Your a score prediction. Give me a score prediction for this game. We saw what the defense can do. Kind of use all that knowledge plus what you you kind of see with Pittsburgh. And what, what's your score prediction? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that we're going to be uh, pretty close to what the 49ers are able to do offensively. Give Cleveland 31, actually. And I'll go ahead. Let me go ahead and get a 31 to, to 17 in there. I'm going to stick close to what you said. I'm going to go not, not, I don't think they're going to hit thirties. Cause I think Deshaun Watson is still getting a little bit the rust off. I still feel like I'm going to go 28 and I'm going to go 13. I'm going to go 28, 13. So similar score region. I'm just a little bit less. I think the, the defense will, will stick it up. Um, one of my, I guess, uh, out there, uh, predictions is that I'm going to say that, I want to say this. I'm going to say David Njoku has 100 yards receiving in this game. David Njoku has 100 yards receiving with a touchdown. That's going to be my bold prediction. Um, and then I will say my second bold – I will give it two bold predictions. My second bold prediction is that we have a defensive or slash special teams touchdown in some way. I don't know what it will be, but in some way, those are my two bold predictions. Do you have any bold predictions that you think is a possibility that could happen? No, uh, I mean, I, you're so maybe it, maybe it's bold to you, but I'll go ahead and say Deshaun throws three touchdowns in this oh, game. Three? Oh, I I said maybe maybe two, maybe two with Deshaun. I feel like this game is going to be one of those that they're going to hand it off to Chubb a lot. It it could be a. If we get a big enough lead, and then maybe I mean, if you would have said run, if you would have said run yards. for two, if you would have said run for two, I'd been like, absolutely. Deshaun I'm will throw ahead. three touchdowns in this one. That's that's okay. a bold one that I'll that's say that I feel prediction. that I feel comfortable about. And maybe our our our, our, t- our teamed up bold prediction would be that Hopkins actually continues to make all of his field goals. Yeah. It's, like, it's like, hey, I'm pretty sure Purdy threw three touchdowns in the Pittsburgh that's game. True. So. That's true. That's <laughs> true. That's pretty true. Um, so yeah, that that's the Browns detailed, Josh. I think it's time for our favorite excitement of the week, right? College football, Josh. Because college football was on this weekend, and we saw a lot of teams do a lot of crazy things. We saw something that neither of us really, at least for me, I did not see coming, and we'll talk about it. So, Josh, where do we want to start in the college football world? Let's break it down, recap of the weekend, and then we will preview this upcoming weekend. Why don't we go ahead and talk about uh, the, the, the big night game? The, the it. it, yeah, because I I picked the Texas Texas to win you this did. one, did I not? You did. I did. I you was. Did. I've been high. I've been high on Texas. Do you uh, feel justified now? Do you feel the preseason? It's it's even still like predicting. It. It's like yeah, that's what should happen when you <laughs> look at coaching staffs, look at talent on the rosters and stuff. But it's still like at yeah. Alabama, so you don't necessarily feel good about it. I was it. shocked, man. I was. But, I was shocked. I didn't get to watch it just with the whole uh, Spectrum Disney ESPN dispute right now. They weren't playing it. So is what it is. What do you but mean? Was, money? Money? Money doesn't solve problems? Yeah. So I was just following on my phone and Texas had a lead most of the time. And I was just like, all right, well, we'll see what happens in the second half since that's historically when Bama has come back in situations yeah. like these. And they just never did. Uh, Quinn looked like a Quinn looked, looked good. Like a, he uh, looked good. Really, uh, really good quarterback in this one. High state developed, yeah. man. High State developed. Yeah. About to be another one of those that got away like Joe Burrow, right? <laughs> yeah, he's developed, man. He spent a year. <laughs> yeah, so uh, 
feeling really good about Texas. Like I said uh, last week, I that's like the toughest game on their schedule. I yeah. think the rest of the year. So it's theoretically you know, all you know, all easy going. And the well, Big Twelve is going, not that good. But Big Twelve is it's not, not looking that good. It's not looking as good as we thought. No. Texas Tech. Texas Tech is zero and two now. Oklahoma's One bad loss. Not looking great. They're looking okay, but they haven't yeah. really played anybody. I think TCU is on the schedule, and they're also I mean, we've bad, already. Though. We've already had the opinion that TCU is probably not going to be yeah, as good. Bad. Yeah, I mean, everybody else thought Baylor didn't be. look great. Baylor hasn't looked great. Um, uh, at Texas A&M hasn't either. I feel like not really what we expect. Um, but this yeah, is, this is still just two weeks into the season. Yeah, but... it's true. You know, overreactions, obviously, but yeah, um, but even still, like on paper, before the season starts, like that's the that's their toughest game, and if they can get past that one, they are capable of winning any of these other games on their schedule. They have a great shot to go undefeated, and and you might see, like I I, I wouldn't be. It's crazy to think about, you know, in the CFP area era that there might not be no Alabama, no Clemson. There, there might be a lot of teams that you've seen there consistently not be in it this year, and then that's good for football. If any of you are saying it's not good for football, shut up, because that's what makes football so amazing. Um, but going back to this game, Josh, I was so impressed with. Um, see, I watched it over here in Hungary via, you know, things. Um, but uh, no, it, it was interesting. And I even watched the highlights afterwards just to kind of get a retake on on things. Milro definitely didn't look as polished as yours. Um, he also, it just didn't feel like a Nick Saban team. I'll be honest with you. I, I just felt like that wasn't a Nick Saban team. Uh, it, it felt really not necessarily disciplined all the time. Um, Texas honestly just owned them at like every aspect of a game. So, uh, dude, Texas is, I think they're here to stay, man. And it's good for college football to have Texas back. It is good for college football to have Texas back. And I, and I truly believe that. Yeah. It's, it took a while for them to finally, finally get some things right. There's the resources have always been there. The history has always oh, been there. there. Yeah. The, the love for the sports always been there, but they've, they've just Coaching failed for, trolling, yeah. they just failed for so long. And it looks like they, they got a guy with Sark that's going to, be here to stay and keep them here, like you said. So no, we'll see what, what happens. It's still only week two, but I'm feeling yeah. really good about Texas still, just like I did before the season started. So what? How do you feel about Alabama coming out of this game? Uh, what are your worries with them, and do you do you still see them as a contender at any stage of it, or do you feel this is more like a Clemson where there it's going to be a long road ahead? Well, like I said before the season started, all the the good thing for Alabama is that all their tough games are at home. Yeah. They get LSU at home. They get Tennessee at home. We've already seen LSU fold against Florida State, so maybe they won't be as challenging as we initially yeah. thought. We're going to learn a little bit more about Tennessee in their game against Florida this week. It's going to be like the first, I guess, Power 5 team I think they've played, if I remember right. But, um, yeah, I mean, Texas Texas very well could be the toughest game on Bama's schedule as well once it's all said and done. But, yeah, you got to think what, the, what can uh, – we're going to find out too eventually uh, what kind of weaknesses pop up and uh, maybe some matchups that maybe LSU and Tennessee can take advantage of and stuff. But uh, I think I, I think when we were talking SEC schedule and stuff, I saw Bama going like nine and three. Yeah. Maybe winning one of those games. I think uh, the other big one that I pointed out that was going to be probably a challenge was maybe their game with Ole Miss. But yeah, right now I, uh, if I'm a Bama fan, I am I am a little concerned. Yeah. And I think that's the first time you've had to say that in a very long time. And not um, concerned that you're gonna go like eight and four, but just yeah. maybe well, even mean, another maybe even another ten and two and miss well, the playoff just, season. I think it's 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 in a weird way, it's a it's kind of it's a nice thing that you haven't had to worry about this in a while. Like you've had so much success. Um but yeah, I look at the um yeah, just the game overall. I thought it was a, a very well coached game by Sark. I thought everything, all the decisions were pretty spot on. A few things here and there, but hey, Texas is there here to play, and and I think they have a really good shot at making the college football playoff. Me too. Um, there, there were a decent amount of uh non conference or out of conference 
yes. matchups that we were talking about uh, the week before. And I think most of them ended up having the results that we thought, but there were a couple close calls there for some of the teams yeah. like Oregon uh, was trailing in the fourth quarter to Texas tech, but managed to pull that one off. Uh, Wisconsin, not so lucky loses to Washington yeah. state in that non-conference game. And then I'm going to go ahead and refresh my memory. I think Ole Miss won their game as well against Tulane. Tulane, I think, had a quarterback injury, and that once made it wasn't as good as what we initially thought. Baylor, Baylor almost was able to pull it off against Utah, but uh, Utah Close. ends up leaving yeah. with a twenty to thirteen win there. Um, High State was in a barn burner. Yeah, we'll wait for, on that one. Uh, we'll talk about that one last, since I'm sure you got a lot of thoughts. Miami ends up beating Texas. Yeah, forty. That was to weird, man. That was that was a weird one. Did not see that one. coming, man. I thought. Did not I thought. See I thought coming. that. I thought that was the game AM could win. Turns out we were wrong, man. Not, we were not both the wrong. case, yeah. Uh the last one that uh I guess I'll make mention of from the weekend is uh Colorado just Dude. continuing to get big numbers from Shadur it, Sanders. It, Travis Hunter still playing significant snaps on both sides of the football. I this is a uh, two power five teams that they've opened the season with. Not too many teams can say that. And they're Alaska. uh they're two I know, but they're two P five. Yeah. Ohio State can't yeah. even say it. They've played two power five true. teams. I I would say this. I said it. You know, last week's episode was titled "Do you believe in Colorado?" Josh, are you are you getting to the point where you're like this team is legit and this team can run the table, or do you still need to see it against maybe a little bit harder competition like a USC or a Utah? I'm gonna need to see something like that. And let me preface where I'm at with Colorado. I did never I never thought that TCU or Nebraska were gonna be anything special this year. I yeah. I said very well that TCU could finish five and seven. And I thought that Nebraska was one of those other teams that could be like four and eight, five and seven. Matt Rule teams just never do too well in year one and they got a lot of work to do there. That's just the way it is. But Colorado, I thought even with all the transfers they brought in, most of them were three stars. Most of them were new faces that haven't really seen a whole lot of action on the field outside of Travis Hunter and Shadur Sanders, that it was going to take a little while. And if they could just, you know, beat the over under three and a half this year and go like, you know, three and three and nine, four and eight, five and seven, even maybe as their ceiling, that was going to be a good win for them. But here they are already two power five wins on the schedule. Like I said, that I didn't think that they could get at the start of the season. I th- I think that now I'm I'm seeing Colorado is more of like in that six and six seven and five territory. But if I before I'm ready to say yeah they could go nine and three ten and two maybe even contend to win this Pac-12 conference I'm gonna have to see them do it against one of those yeah you know USC's UCLA's Oregon's Washington's Oregon State you, all these teams that I think are are better than them even still right now yeah. I'm gonna have to see that but I think they can go you know, in that five and seven, six and six range for sure. They're, they're showing me that. Yeah. I've, I've heard it now. I forget who it was. was like teams better be athletic directors are not terrified of NIL anymore. They're terrified of a man called Deion Sanders. Um, and I think there's a lot of good points to that. I think Deion Sanders is much as you might dislike him or whatever. He's good for the game of college football and, and Colorado, he's put Colorado on the map and he's been there for what? Six months. Um, I, I, I am slowly believing, like, I believe Sanders, if he keeps this up, can be a Heisman candidate. Um, he may or may not be already breaking into my Heisman watch list, but we'll have to see what happens. Um, but he, he is phenomenal. And and I think this team is going to be phenomenal. I think there's just a lot more they have to do. And, and again, against better competition. We're going to find that real quick though. After Colorado state this week, they got a game at Oregon and then a home game against USC. Yeah. It's going to be back to back. That's, if they win those two games, then Josh and I will be sitting here saying, here's a, here's a contender for the playoff. They can, well, playoff contender, but at least for the conference, I'll say if they can win one of those, like count me in. Yeah, for sure. For the PAC 12, at least. For sure. Those are the two, probably the two favorites right now to win the PAC 12 is Oregon and USC. Yep. But 
with that all being said, I'm I'm sure you got thoughts on Ohio State. Uh, Kyle yeah. McCord is officially the starter now. Yeah. If there was yeah, any yeah. doubt in anyone's mind, even though McCord has taken 90 to 95% of the snaps already, that there's still a chance that Devin Brown could be the starter. All of those uh, thoughts you know, put to rest. It's Kyle McCord's team. And obviously, Youngstown's not as good of a team as yeah. Indiana. So much better results. Maybe not as much pushing around and owning at the line of scrimmage as you would have liked to see, yeah. but Marv looked much more like Marv. Yeah. Kyle McCord, a little bit more comfortable in the stat sheet, it looked like. What did you see, Ben, on Saturday? Yeah, you know, I, I think, one, I want to give credit to the Youngstown State offensive line. They're probably, they might be as good as Indiana's offensive line. I mean, they were big. like They were all, like, over 300 pounds, so you don't really see that from an FCS school very often. Um Young South State was was talented when they scored that first touchdown to go seven seven. I was like, oh boy, is this going to be one of those games? Um, but then I felt like Kyle McCord got comfortable. Harrison, I, that first touchdown was just shows you just his speed when he gets out in the open field. He he missed some easy throws. That, like no, he he had two drops, which was very unorthodox for Marvin Harrison. Um, Abuka looked like himself again. Uh, Travion Henderson looked great when he was in there, but I'm I'm really getting tired of this like three back look, and it doesn't make sense for anyone that's watching. Um, dude, leave Travion in there. He is a home run hitter. As much as I love Mayan and train him, um, he he is your home run hitter. Um, defense looked good again. There was some slippage in pass pro, which pass coverage. I mean, which does make me a little nervous for Western Kentucky. We'll talk about it just because they throw the ball a lot. Um, also just, there's no sacks. There's just, I mean, there was like two, but it was like, there's no, no hurries or anything like that. So for me, I think the defense has to just keep building, keep growing. Um, offensive line looked a lot better, like didn't look great, but looked a lot better. Um, and and I think that's going to open up the run game, which then opens up the pass game. Um, but again, I I'm super glad that Kyle McCord, do I wish Brown would have got more looks? Yeah, but McCord really has looked the best when he's in there and his most poise. Um, so those are my takes. Yeah, I'm I'm really thinking that Ryan Day led the media on that this competition was a oh, lot sure. closer than what it actually is. Oh, for sure. Because he looked so much better than Brown. It wasn't even not close. only that, it's just Ryan Day's actions are speaking louder than his words. He's let McCord yeah. basically play two full games and Brown's come in and maybe gotten 10 total snaps. Maybe, I, I don't know, I haven't been really keeping track of that, but if it was all that close, I think we'd have seen a much more 50-50 split. Like it would have been every other Michigan series. With McNamara it would have been every McCarthy. other series. Right. Like when we saw McNamara and McCarthy in a competition last year, we saw basically a full game for each of them, or yeah. at least a much more uh, 50-50 split of snaps. And with McCord and Brown, it's like, yeah, this is McCord's team. Even in the Indiana game when it was close, like I said last week, he they trusted one guy. He trusted one guy to stay in the game. He did not think, well, maybe Devin Brown can come in here and spark him. He's like, no, McCord's the guy that we need in this situation. And yeah, I mean, he's going be, forward. Brown, Brown feels me like the righty Tim Tebow, like just run power with him and throw like slants and deep balls. That's basically what I feel like he does. So, yeah. But then, yeah, going forward this Saturday, uh, Western Kentucky runs that air raid style yeah, of offense. Geez. So we're really gonna we're really gonna see yeah, uh, the secondary that. finally get a test since they really didn't against Indiana with that triple option. I and, mean, I'll be worried. I mean, Youngstown I, being Youngstown, I, I am worried about I, uh, Iwabuka or I, Iwabu, whatever his name is. Igbenosa. Uh, yeah, Igbenosa. He's the other corner during this game against Youngstown. Man, when he was one on one on the field side, he got chewed apart. And it does worry me because that was always our issue. We had one good corner, but there was always that lapse. So I'm interested to see how he does against uh, East, uh, Western Kentucky um, and and go from there. Not a ton of exciting games on the slate. It doesn't look That's like true. there's any top I'll give 25 you, I'll, matchups. I will give you a prediction of the, of the, of the Buckeyes game. I'm going to say – Man, I I said high last week. I don't. I just don't think the offense is going to score that many points because they just seem to can't. So, I'm going to say Buckeyes 38, Western Kentucky 20. I feel like this is going to be one of those games where they just put on those weird touchdowns at the end against the second team defense. So I'm going to go 38 20. 38 20. All right. Yeah, not a whole lot of exciting games on the slate. No top 25 matchups. I'm scrolling through right now. Basically, uh. 
what we're looking at this week is Penn State at Illinois. We'll be LSU at, be a tough at game. LSU at Mississippi State, South Carolina at Georgia, um, Washington at Michigan State. Which, by the way, Mel Tucker. What yeah, what do you, what do you think is, about that? What do you think about that? Do you do you think he's done, or do you think we're at this? You know, we're in this life now where he's going to be done. I haven't looked enough into the details to know if he's guilty or not. But what I Mike D'Antoni is back. What I do think, though, is that Michigan State owes Mel Tucker a lot of money if they were to yes. fire him for sucking as a football coach. Big buyout over there, and now they have possibly a reason to fire him for cause. And exactly. not have to worry about the buyout. So if there's any ounce of possibility that he did what uh, they're accusing him of, I think they're going to go ahead and take advantage of it, even though Michigan State right now is 2-0 to start the season. I think they realize that that contract was a mistake, and they're going to do what they can to get out of it. And every, maybe, that's not the most, maybe, that, maybe that's not the most fair or the most just thing to do, but I think it's reality, and I think that's uh, probably the approach that the athletic department's going to be taking. I think everyone knew that was a mistake when he signed it. I think everyone did. Yeah, but, after yeah. after basically being a one year wonder and came yeah, back I, down to earth, you know, couldn't couldn't develop a recruiting process and didn't repeat success in the transfer portal. Yeah. You know, Josh, I will say I love these kind of weeks. I always love like week threes when there's not many crazy games because there's always like one upset. There's always like one game where there's an upset we don't usually expect. And that a high state was that against Virginia Tech, and and I think that's going to be that could happen this week, man. Yeah, um, if we had one, I mean, we do have an interesting amount of road games for these top twenty five teams. So, like yeah. I was saying, LSU is at Mississippi State, Penn State is at Illinois. Um, not that I think they're going to lose this game, but Alabama is at South Florida, which is kind of interesting. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, Oklahoma is at Tulsa. Also um, weird. Washington, the clear favorite in this game is at Michigan State. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know where exactly uh, that possible upset could come, but yeah, I guess, I guess we'll stay tuned, man. I don't, I don't have any strong feeling about any one of these games. Oh, and Kansas State at Missouri. Two two and O teams. There you go. Noon game. That could be another one that I could see, but yeah, I don't know don't know i i agree with you there is a lot of a lot of i think this is just the weird week where you have these kind of up and down games but um usc doesn't play this week uh the only reason i know that is because uh one of my players doesn't play on fantasy this week but um i think it's it's going to be an interesting week of football i know i love watching this kind of weeks uh but josh i thought you know do you have anything else to say about college football or or, or for the 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 games this week or or is that you does that cover it it's pretty much it yeah so why don't we this last few minutes here of the podcast give our top five power rankings for college football and our top five heisman watch list our list now as you know we did this last year we started it again this year uh, on the story we'll do it again so josh what is your power five for good old college football Right as at this moment. So when we say college football, we mean at this moment in time, not thirty years from now, but at this moment. Yeah, I'm still going to stick with Georgia at number one, uh, the def- two-time defending national champ, and they haven't done anything to indicate to me that they can't win a third one just yet. So I'm going to leave them at number one for now. I think I am going to go ahead and bump Texas up to two, though. That's a uh, team that I already was high on I think I had them at three or four last week and now that they got that signature win I'm believing in them a lot more so I'm gonna go ahead and throw Texas at two I'm Mm -hmm. gonna go ahead and keep Michigan at three uh I'm gonna bump USC up to four and put Ohio State at five Mm -hmm. Ohio State I think Ohio State might have been uh three for me the last time they just i think at this i think at this moment if they had to go against one of those other teams there'd there'd be some issues that they haven't worked out yet they got they got some kinks to work through hopefully they get those uh figured out before the notre dame game week four we're going to learn about them and a lot about them in that one especially with the way way sam hartman's been balling out but 
I'm not going to drop Ohio State too significantly at this point because I think that assuming that they get some of these things cleaned up, that's still one of the strongest offensive skill groups in the country. And the defensive line still has potential to be one of the best in the country. So I'm going to leave them at five for now and not drop them out completely. But yeah, I I would love to throw Florida State in there, but just not yet. Yeah. So for me, I, I agree with you. I still think Georgia's at top. They had a little slow start on Saturday, but I still have Georgia at number one. I don't I don't think there's even a team really right now that I feel like is better than them. Um so I'm gonna go Georgia number one. Uh again, they're they're starting to figure the offense out. Their defense is still freaking freakishly good. Um I'm gonna go two. I, I'm going to go um I'm going to go Texas as well. Like I, it, I had them at four last week. It's very hard for me to jump two teams, but again, I think these two teams in Michigan and high state have not played anybody really. Um, whereas Texas just went and beat Alabama who many people have in their top five or right outside the top five. So um, I'm going to go Texas at two, three. I'm going to stick with Michigan. Uh, it's, oh, it hurts me to say it, but um they haven't done anything to be like, they're not a good team, right? Or they're not a top five team. So I'm going to keep them there. Um, for me and Josh, I'm about to swirl some, I don't know, some craziness, but I'm going to go Penn State at four. I've watched Penn State. I like what they're doing offensively. Aller looks like a legit starting mm -hmm. QB for a power five team. Their running back duo is phenomenal. Um, they have some threats on the outside. Their defense has been playing well. They're going to be at four for me, uh, and then five will be Ohio State. And who would have thought Ben, who had, who is always way too biased and put Ohio State in the top <laughs> five all the time. But to me, it, it, as an Ohio State fan, as someone who can look at it from a different perspective, I I believe they're they're struggling in a very concerning way on the offensive line and the quarterback. And until I see consistency against Western Kentucky and especially against Notre Dame, like. If they beat Notre Dame by let's say twenty five points, then I don't. I'm I'll put them right where they need to be. But until they own a team, they have not owned a team this year yet. And once they do that, then I'll feel more comfortable with them uh, inside the top four. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at as well. Uh, like I said, I'm not I'm not going to overreact and drop them. You know, from three or wherever I had them before to out of the top five just yet. But Florida State is uh is it's knocking creeping. on the door They're and creeping if, if Ohio State doesn't doesn't do so hot against Notre Dame I'm gonna have to make the switch but I won't do it yet that's that's very good well now we move into the fun part the Heisman watch list uh we might have some shockers I don't know but Mr. Josh why don't you start with number one we'll go no let's start at number five we'll each start with our number five so you go number five first so cracking the top five for me now and I have to do it right now because, like I said, he's played two power five teams and he's second in the country in passing Dang yards. Gum it. It's Shador Sanders, man. I can't ignore it right I now. Wanted, I wanted to be the guy that broke that. I thought you were going to be the guy that's like, oh, no, he's not in my top list. Fine. No, I, I got to do it. And the only reason that I wouldn't include Travis Hunter here is because just, I think a I, big yeah. part of Travis Hunter being a Heisman finalist is that he maintains this hundred snaps a game kind of thing and being a lead on both sides of the football. Yeah. He still very well could be a finalist at the end of the season, but if he's going to be the guy to get in ahead of Shador, maybe there's even a case where they both make it. I don't know. But right now I think you had to pick one. I'm going to go ahead and go with Shador Sanders right now. Oh, wow. Josh and I are on the same, same spot. Yeah. I'm going to go uh, Shador Sanders at five as well. I just, I, I, I like what he does with the ball in his hands. He he makes plays. He escapes when he has to, but he makes that. He steps up. He makes those throws. Um, again, he's got got some nice, decent weapons. Uh, some pretty good weapons around him. Um, but again, I know it's two power fives, but still, I can't put him inside this because again, it's not. He hasn't faced an elite defense or an elite team yet. And once that happens, then we can have that conversation. But um, he is fun to watch, and uh, I definitely had to put him in the top five. For sure. All right. Uh, number four for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put Bo Nix here. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Uh, He's hurt me on fantasy, so it really ticks me off. 
Yeah, maybe not as many touchdowns as you would like to see at this point, but definitely uh, helping Oregon score a lot of points, putting up the total yards. Led the team back over Texas Tech last week, so it's – I mean, it's nothing nothing fancy, nothing crazy, but it is a guy that we saw put up a bunch of bunch of points, a bunch of yards yeah. last year, and so far he's been continuing to do that, so I'm going to keep him at four for now. Uh, for me at four, it's just he's moving up a spot. Uh, uh, Daniels, Jaden Daniels has has bumped out of my top five. Uh, I'm going to put Michael Penix Jr. He's moving into uh, number four for me. Um, again, he he's just he, he. It's so interesting to watch him. He's so fluid. He's a lefty. He seems so fluid. He he seems very reserved kind of guy. But he, I remember when I saw him at Indiana, and then seeing what he's doing at Washington and that that system. Um, he's going to be a very good quarterback at the next level. Um, and, and so, yeah, for me, he's number, number four. All right. Number three for me, I'm going to, I'm going to put Jordan Travis here. Not the best game from him last week, but obviously we saw what him and Florida state did against LSU in week one. I think that's one of the best performances of the season so far, given the, the competition and just the total output. So right now I still feel good about, uh, Jordan Travis. So keeping him, putting him at three. Yeah, I, I, I was debating where to go with this, Josh. I was, I'm, I'm looking at my list now, and I, it was even before the show started, I was debating. Um, but for me, number, number three for me is Bo Nix. Um, I, I kind of agree with you when it comes to maybe he hasn't had the explosiveness as what we were expecting or the, the start of the season we were expecting, but I still think he is a top top four player in college football right now. Um, and I think that he, he still can make a difference in the games for Oregon. Uh, I think Oregon wins if he has a good game every game or, a, or at least as leadership wise. So for me, I'm going to go with Bo Nix. Good stuff. All right. Number two for me, uh, I'm going to, if I didn't already have him here last week, it's, it's Michael Penix at two. Dude's still slinging it over at Washington. That offense is still looking incredible. I I assume that he's going to continue to do this once they start facing some of their better competition. And we'll, I guess, see Washington finally get a quote-unquote test with Michigan State this week. But it was high Michael Penix based on his performance last year and still so far this season he's looking hot. So Michael Penix at two. Yeah, you can go wrong. I mean, to me, I, I kind of wish he was um, maybe – Maybe a little higher on my list now that I'm thinking about it. I'm regretting it now. Josh's list seems better than mine. You can change it. No, I'm not going to. Josh, I, I stick with my list until the next week. Um, no, I I'm going to stick with I'm gonna, at number two. I'm going to put Drake May again. I you look at his stats like I'm looking at him right now. Nothing crazy, right? He's only thrown two touchdown passes. Um, his completion percentage is pretty good right now. Seventy three percent. His is. Uh, his ratings kind of at 141 QBR is like, is like 84.4. So top 15 in numbers there. Um, I, I don't think he has the threats necessarily is that I, I think that he would like. Um, but again, I, I just think that the talent there, I know what I think I'm going to get from him. So I'm going to put him there. And again, Quinn Ewers was really close. Travis was really close to making my top, top five. Um, they'll probably be there next week. Who knows? Um, but that's number two for me. Who is number one for you? And I feel like we're both going the same direction on this, but let's hear it. Yeah, real quick before I say it, I I wanted to figure out a way to get Quinn Ewers into this list too, but I didn't know really where to fit it unless yeah, I was to agreed. bump someone out that I thought better of. And we're still early on, so you could honestly make case for like 20, 30 guys right mm -hmm. now. But once the weeks go on, everyone starts, you know, showing uh, showing themselves as who they really are and stuff. And then it, the race becomes more narrow. But number one for me, Caleb Williams, defending Heisman champ. He's continued to put up huge numbers, really yards numbers. and touchdowns against all these, uh, you know, G5 teams that they've been playing against. And he has a very good shot of winning it two two times. I think he has a very good shot. Yeah, uh, they're about to get tested with Oregon State here. I think next week. Yeah, they're on a bye this or week. the week after that. But that game's coming up. It's going to be interesting to watch that. But Caleb Williams hasn't done anything to make me think he can't win it yet. Yeah. Agree with you, Caleb Williams. He's number one. I think it's a pretty big gap. Um, now, part of me thinks that he's not going to win it because there's going to be some other storyline, whether that's Sanders or someone else. Um, I just I think when yours could have a nice storyline yeah, at least right now. 
bringing Texas back, Shador, yeah, I, like you said. But yeah, I just feel like there's two. There they hold on to that Archie Griffin being the only guy. It's it. I think it's very hard for the NCA and the committees and everything that vote on that to like go. We need to go some a different direction. You know, someone else should win too. So, um, I mean, they call it combinations, but I think Caleb Williams right now. I've watched his highlights. I mean, he's just he's looked phenomenal. So, um, again, yeah, Caleb Williams number one for me. Uh, and, and there they are. Josh, those are our power rankings and our Heisman watch list. Um, we hope you enjoyed today's show. Um, it, it's been full of full of deep conversation, as they would say. Uh, but we hope you have a great uh, weekend coming up, whether you're watching the NFL, whether you're watching college football, maybe you're watching high school football. I know my high school football team is looking pretty good right now. So go check out your local high school football team. Give them the support. Um, they they trust me they need that uh i was an athlete in high school once it's kind of nice to see the community come out so go do that um and make sure you spend time with family and friends if you've loved today's episode make sure you hit that thumbs up hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell on youtube that allows us to see you and maybe even the algorithm will pick you more and then we'll you'll see more of our videos it's just the way it works uh and then finally if you're listening on spotify or apple Podcasts, make sure you share the link with friends and family as we all know, we have that one grandma that wants to know what we like to listen to. So you could you could share it with us. Maybe it could be, you know, some old person's nighttime listening podcast. That's just weird. But anyways, uh, no, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, and until next time, we'll see ya.